More people have climbed Everest than completing the crossing across the Atlantic on a rowing boat. I hope that doesn't make you feel any worse, but... Mate! It makes us feel better, to be honest, because you, you want to be, be in that percentage of people that's done something that other people haven't. It's a steady pace all the way through, so... Fitness-wise, I think you've got to be mentally fit rather than physically fit. During the day, you're looking at around 10,000 calories. On the boat, I'll be on a 8,000 calorie trying diet. Trying to get in the boat routine, cooking on the boat, sleeping on the boat, trying to sleep and on the boat. The smallest board. movement, it was hammered into it from day one. Around. The hardest right. size is getting, getting your stuff together, getting your stuff together, getting your stuff together, getting your stuff together. Just getting to that start point and hearing that clacks and go, and knowing it's just us four against the ocean. That, I think that, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. I'm quite good at geography. I know how big the Atlantic is on a world map. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 listen. I know how, how, how big it is on, on scale around the world, is what I'm saying. What is it? Well, England's that big. <laughs> Hello, Betty. Hello, darling. I'm Betty Ball. I'm Stevie B. He's a Mackin. And she's from South Shields. And this is Speak Up Sunderland. Woo! Yay! So what we'd like to do is invite our guest tonight. We're very, very excited. So I met him at the air show. Please give a, a huge round of applause for John Adams. <laughs> Sit in our comfy seat, John. Right. Grab a pew. Right. Can you hear us all right? Well, yeah. I'm really excited that you sat here because it's uh, not unfortunate looking. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you really need to stop drinking. It's cake. It's what happens is to you it is? cake. Oh, God, you've had cake and drink. Excellent. Bless him. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Right, um, John Adams, born and bred in Sunderland. For the last 10 years, though, I've lived in Manchester. Are you? Yeah, yeah. So I've been out of touch a bit with the city. So coming to the day of the day, I've had a little bit of a explore. This is the first time I've actually been in this pub. Can you, Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking over the road, can't see the Black Bull anymore. That's, that's different. So I can see the change that's happening in the city already. Half the ledge you sent to the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you sat here for? Right, I'm um, part of a crew of four people who've decided to row across the Atlantic Ocean. What? Uh, this year. Right, just repeat that again because I want everyone to hear what he's, what he's doing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm part of a crew of four people who have decided to row across the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> this year. 3,000 miles straight across, all for charity. See, so it's not, you know, he hasn't gone across a lake, he hasn't got to South Shields or something, he hasn't bought a South dinghy. Shields. He's gone across the Atlantic. It's, I this like is stress, how... I was sober when I accepted <laughs> the challenge as well. I was asked approximately about a year and a half ago like I said, sober, and I just jumped on the chance because I thought, well, this kind of opportunity only comes round maybe once in a lifetime, and especially when you're doing it for a good cause as well, well why wouldn't you do it? So there's four of you. You've got Colin, who's also from yeah, Sunderland. Yeah, he's, he's, he's from also from Sunderland. Yeah, Silt I've known Swift. him for like 19 years. <laughs> and then you've got John. John Ford, yeah, he's, he's the captain, uh, and he's from Scotland. So he's King Crazy. Yeah. And then you've got <coughs> Derek Spence. Yes, Derek Spence is from New Zealand, but currently lives in Aylesbury. This is Derek Spence, and I'm proud to be rowing for the Scots Guards charity. The charity does outstanding work to support our vets, serving soldiers and their families. We want to do something that was worthy of the charity, and it doesn't come much bigger than rowing the Atlantic. And then you've got your fabulous self. So yeah. tell us how all four of you are together. It's a funny one because Derek and John, being the crazy people that they are, they'd done the Marathon de Sable, which is the Desert Marathon. Oh, right. Where it's like seven days, you run a marathon every day for six days, and then the last day you do two marathons. Anyway, they got together and they said, oh, she would do it again. They'd done it again, and then they said, oh, she would do it again. They thought, no, let's do something different. And they thought, sack the desert, let's row across an ocean. I bumped into uh, John Ford, crossed, our paths crossed in the uh, recruitment side of life in the army. Oh, so army bases, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where all four of you It was just kind of one from. of them cho chance meetings, and he said, how would you feel about rowing across the Atlantic Ocean? And I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's a normal answer back, isn't it? You know, yeah, well, again, I thought, well, when am I ever going to get asked to row across an ocean? Possibly never, probably he's never accepted again anyway, but... I'm not being funny, but that's a very blasé way of saying such a, a mammoth challenge, <laughs> which you will complete, which is absolutely outstanding, but you've got quite a lot of obstacles to kind of mm. get through. Can you tell me a little bit? God, I don't know where to start. I mean, from when we accepted the challenge, or when I, when I accepted the challenge, 
it was hammered into you from day one that the hardest part is getting to the start line. The actual rowing part, you'll probably find easy, but just getting there, getting your boat together, getting the crew together, getting the equipment together, and everything else that comes with that is the hardest part. Where is the start line? The start line is in La Gomera in the Canary Islands. And where's the finish? Antigua. Now you're thinking I'm getting a nice little holiday in the Canary Islands, a nice little holiday in Antigua. I know your plan here, you see. It's one straight <laughs> line which is you where, there. where the sun's all the time, so you're doing it for a suntan, really, aren't you? Um, I wish I was, yeah. <laughs> I say, I'm not being funny, but I know this is probably not a question I'm going to ask. How on earth are you going to go to the toilet? We've got a, we've got a nice comfy bucket. <laughs> Whoa. I know that's not what, like a question that would automatically go through well, people's we've, heads. We've been, doing, like, we've been doing training rows where the main emphasis has been on trying to get in the boat routine, cooking on a boat, sleeping on a boat, or trying to sleep on a boat, going to the toilet on a boat, because it's such a... I mean, if you saw it on the, you saw it on their show, you probably thought that's a huge boat. It was Until massive. Until you're on a, an ocean and you realise it's minuscule. And the smallest movement, it just, it just moves around. Because so, it's so light for the size of it. When you've got four people on, you've got a quad. If you, get, if you stand up and you want to move just like two feet away, you've got to see, all right, I'm moving to the to the right of you and people have got to move over like do you want to try and like paint a picture like from sort of one end of the boat to the other what what, you, what you've actually got in your quarters and so on you've basically got two covered cabins one either end and that's the sleeping quarters and if you can imagine the rowing machines you've got kind of three of them behind each other in between and that is it you've got all your storage space underneath so you're pretty much, when you're rowing, you've got no cover at all. You're basically in the, at the mercy of the sun. And then when you go into your sleeping cabin, that's when you're undercover. But because you've got to keep the hatches closed, it's like a greenhouse, so you kind of... So what kind of sweating. like dangers and hazards? I mean, you've obviously looked, if you're going to go from that point to that point, mm. how do you know what hazards you're going to get? I was kind of fortunate in a way that I knew someone who'd done it in 2016. And oh, so this is a regular yearly occurrence. It's, it's a race that happens every year. I didn't even know people rode across oceans. I thought people just got either flew over them or got a ferry across. But <laughs> my friend, well, not my friend, he was my boss actually, but he came in and said, Oh, I'm doing this row. And I thought, OK. And I kind of lived the same journey as him on a nine to five basis where he was a 24 7 living this journey. And I kind of saw from the start to the very end, and he came back and showed us these pictures of whales and dolphins and the sunset over the Atlantic and everything else that came with it. And, he kind of had this like romantic portfolio of him just having a nice little row across the Atlantic. And then after that, he showed us the horror pictures of what happens when you sit in the seat for two on, two off every day and you get the rubs and the sores and the, the salt Lovely. sores and everything else. So I kind of got the good, the bad and the ugly of the whole thing way before I got asked to do it. But when he came back and he said, oh, I've rowed across the Atlantic Ocean, it was just that whole thing of you don't meet many people who's done that kind of thing. And I want to be one of them people. It's quite a statement and one hell of a CV. I have to admit. Yeah. But for this actual race, there's 30 teams yeah. from around the world to compete, and then they have their own routes to get around. It says, from what I've found, it is 1.5 million all strokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's divided between four. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> but still. And then it's that's a breeze. <laughs> 40 days at sea. That's, that's the average. Yeah. And six meter waves. Yeah. And there's four of you. There's, there's four of us. And um, yeah. four of you. And we'll be doing, yeah, two hours rowing, two hours kind of resting. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to rest anyway. So is that how it works in DR? Is it two people row, two That's people That's the kind of routine you want to get on to make it more efficient. The, the idea behind it is if you do too much on the rows, your performance will drop. And um, you're not really resting that much anyway. So I think two on two off is the most effective way of getting the maximum out of you rest-wise and performance-wise. But I th I th again, it comes with the boat and your people and you know your body yourself. And if you can do three on, three off, fine. If not, stick to two on. You can chop and change as you go along, but again, it it's all down to the boat. That's us moved up for the night after 43 nautical miles road. Road for about eight hours, so 43 nautical miles is no bad, just over five, five an hour. Derek, how's it been for you? It's been really good. It's been a good day. It's beautiful weather. John only got seasick once. <laughs> you had to mention that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, great, thanks. I'm going to John now. Yeah, it was good day. Uh, good long days. One finally got to see the wind farm, and I remember sun cream this time, so it was a bit easy on the skin as well. But I think all in all, the weather's been pretty kind of. Yeah. 
What about, because obviously what's going to be really key to it as well is, is, is your intake, what you eat, because that's going to be critical, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the, the, it kind of got drummed into you when we've done the, uh, the first Ocean Run course was go there heavy. Don't think you need to be super fit to run across an ocean because it's the opposite. You need to pack on as much weight as you can so you've got emergency Do you need an muscle and fat to bear burn off. Mate, there's loads yeah. of cake there if you need to take it. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. We heard that and was like kind of, I haven't been for a run for the best part of a year and it's all been about just building my body up, eating. Because I'm, I'm at the minute, I'm on a 3,000 calorie diet, but on the boat I'll be on a 8,000 calorie diet of just eating as much as I can because during the day you're looking at burning 10,000 calories. So what food are you actually going to be eating? Because bear in mind you're there for quite a while. We've got a nutrition plan out and it's mostly dehydrated rations, lots of porridge, protein shakes, just quick stuff you can get down here, yeah. snacks, cheeses, beef jerky, protein bars, nuts. How are you going to keep all of like say dairy cool? Um, I think that's going to be the first thing to go to be honest. <laughs> you know, on, a, on a cheese diet for the first 10 oh, days. You're going to stink? Yeah. Oh, you're going to have deli... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. All right, so we've spoke a little bit about what you're going to be doing, but who are you doing it for? It's for the Scots Guards charity. It was agreed straight off the bat that we'll do it for the regimental charity because it not only does it for serving members, it does for veterans as well. So if you've worn a uh, Scots Guard as a cap star, that charity's there for you, be it still serving or a veteran. So I thought... Yeah, let's just give back. So your target's a hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. Where are you right now? We're actually doing a lot better than what we uh, <laughs> what we thought. It was a, a kind of it was it was a point during the uh, sponsorship period where we thought we need to get our finger out here. But at the minute, yes, it's starting to come in at a steady rate now. Where it was a kind of slow build up at first. I think Captain Ford's a bit dubious about telling us where whereabouts we actually are in case we take our foot off the gas. But yeah, there's a, there's a steady flow coming in. And we're, we're looking pretty good at the minute. I'll tell you one thing I, I did think about, because obviously you're going to set off in December. You're going to be doing this throughout Christmas and New Year, so how's your family reacted to well, this? Well, that was, that was probably the first obstacle I had to get over by telling my wife that. I'm how not did gonna... you bring it to her? <laughs> I'd love gonna, to be around on this wall. <laughs> I was kind of playing out how it would work in my head, and I thought, you know what, let's just go in there, let's just lay the cards on the table and say, all right, this is what I want to do, are you happy with it? If she said no, what would you have done it in any way? Uh, no. <laughs> is it is it happy think, life, happy wife? Uh, yeah, says, yeah, definitely, that situation? definitely. Keeping the wife happy is the main point thing in my life. But I think she knew I wanted to do it so much, so she wouldn't get in the way. She was more than happy to let us do it. She's quite. She's been supportive all the way through it, and that's probably one of the main things you need if you're going to do a challenge like this. Is you need the family because when you're aware, they're looking after everything. Mm -hmm. You kind of ditch all your virtually all your responsibilities, and your wife's taking care. So. There's, there's two parts of the race. There's us that's got the row, and then there's a, the family back home who's got to keep everything in check. And you've, we've all got kids as well. What do they think of this? Well, mine's two, so he's just. Oh! He's quite how happy to play with the chalkboard. <laughs> he's like your little mini mascot, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so but, uh, cute. He, he, I think he, he just. He'd be quite happy playing about a Christmas time. You don't even notice I'm gone, to be honest. You will. <laughs> but can, can you imagine, like, years down the line, do you think that, like, you're setting a good role, a role model for your son and other people doing this? I think my wife wouldn't think I am. I think my wife would want my son to just use his brain, stay in college and just stay away from motion, stay away from armed forces, stay away from being in the field. Why did well, you well? And you were doing something absolutely amazing yeah. from it and helping so many people. I mean, a role for, a role for heroes, which is on your T-shirt there. Yeah, yeah, that, that is quite a... It's quite an achievement. Just even thinking about it is quite outstanding. Yeah. I like him. He's cute. <laughs> Do you know, it's, it's weird. I, I feel exactly the same as I did when I met you at the air show. And I'm sitting here thinking, I keep saying the same sentence in my head. He's run across the Atlantic. He's run across the Atlantic. I, I, I am, I'm in awe of anybody that can do, have the balls to do it. Like a honeys. Mind you, when you describe what type of person can do it, you pretty much describe me. I mean, I'm ready. Well, Perfect take him, exactly, man. Exactly, yeah. I mean. I'm ready for him, man. <laughs> I'm fully loaded, ready to go. If you want space to for another uh, row if you want to come. But so if you, <laughs> yeah, you will, you I'd will pay good roll. money for that. <laughs> so is there anything you're looking forward to? During the race? Mm -hmm. Um... Because it's been such a massive part of my life, like I said, it was a year and a half ago when we kind of approached to do it. It's just getting on with the task at hand. Because at the minute, it's just been training rows and promoting and all the kind of stuff that goes with that. But just getting to that start point and hearing that klaxon go and knowing let's just 
us four against the ocean. That, I think that, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. And when you get back, what's the first thing you do? Kiss, kiss the ground? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> rocking. It's great. Um, I haven't, do you know what? I haven't, I haven't put much thought into it uh, apart from getting something good to eat and a good night's sleep. Oh. That's as far as and it's one went. thing that you are gonna come across, because my my parents are all work away, and uh, the motion of when you come back, you you're constantly gonna be like this, well, we, and you won't even realise. Well, we had a, a a long row down Essex on the Crouch River. All four of us got together, which was a, a task in itself, mm -hmm. and we were out for forty eight hours, non stop. And when we came into the harbour, there's like a little cafe or bar at the harbour. And we went upstairs to get something to eat and all four of us kind of grabbed hold of the table because we thought, <laughs> we thought us were moving. And was, <laughs> watching people go to the toilet was, was like almost like, after, the locals were looking at us as we were being drinking all, all mm. day and all night. So And that's what, it, that was two years? That was only 48 hours, yeah. So wow. you, God knows what's going to happen after 40 years. It's going to be such an experience. <sighs> and how are we going to stay in touch with you when you are on the Atlantic? We've got a thing on the boat which enables us to post videos and pictures and everything else so we can just wow yeah i mean it sounds impressive but it's got to work <laughs> so hopefully it works but yeah the, the christmas messages will be coming out and that, that's going to be tough though isn't pictures. it i mean doing christmas messages you're mm. going to be in the middle of the ocean or whatever you're going to be and you're mm. going to be talking about your family and it's going to be christmas yeah we've got sat phones as well so we can, we can phone home which should probably be a lot better and a lot clearer than do you think that'll make you feel better or inspire you or do you do you think you might reach a low point when I you think, do that? I mean, it, it's like when you're normally on tour, you, you kind of lose touch with back home. It's always good to ring home and hear the people you know, yeah. rather than your people you've been sat around with for the last 10 days. You just need that kind of break from what you're doing and kind of live through them for a little bit and see what they're doing, see what's happening, because we're not going to know what's happening, the news and everything else. So, so it's that'll always, give you a, a much needed boost. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, every time I've been on tour, I've always rang home and it's, it's, it's been a case of me just listening to them talk about what's been going on rather than what I've been doing because my day is going to be the same. rowing and sleeping and eating, really. It's the probably the most famous thing that, I, that people say to me all the time, Betty, there's nothing the matter with normal. <laughs> there yeah. isn't. There's nothing the matter with normal, and your normal isn't normal at the moment. So their normal is everything to you, yeah. which will mean so much to you. And I genuinely cannot wait to see what happens. So I'm going to fling it out to you, you guys. Is there anything you would like to ask? Anyone's got any thoughts? I, I'm, I'll bet Martin might have. <laughs> Why me? Because your army. Because your forces as well. To be honest with you, I've got one question in mind. Most endurance stuff will challenge individuals' relationships with the people they're doing it with. So is there any like? things that point in this that you've put to one side to make sure your relationship with all four of you don't get too fractured or challenged in a way um that's a good we, question I th yeah yeah i think we did talk about this but like i said i've known colin for like 20 years and we bitch like a married couple anyway so <laughs> we can pretty much say whatever we want to each other and it's forgotten about in the, in the blink of an eye as most servicemen will tell you, you just get it out there, air your grievances, and it's forgotten about. I think the rule of the boat is just be honest. If something's annoying you, nip it in the bud straight away. Don't let it fester. Don't let it bother you and bother you and bother you until you, you just snap. Yeah. Uh, the only, <laughs> so three of us are going to be fine. There's going to be one, the, the guy, Derek from New Zealand, might struggle with that honesty because most civilians are not used to being that candid with each other, whereas squaddies, there's just no secrets. You're just straight out there and you, you <laughs> tell them exactly what you're feeling. Brutal to a point. <laughs> Well, I, th I think that's, that's probably the best way of doing it. If someone's bothering you or some little thing's bothering you, that little thing will just escalate into something bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's best to just get it out there, I think. Yeah. Thank you. There's no silly questions. My last one. Dave Shaw. Hey, uh, so just w with the Atlantic, it is quite well known as the mighty Atlantic. There was a guy that I knew, Neil Eden MacDonald, who tried to go from the Western Isles in Scotland all the way to New York. All right. And he failed. He's on his, I think he's on his fourth attempt now. Um, so how are you sort of physically prepared for the challenges of the Atlantic? Um, well, I think the, the best advice we were given was go there heavy, put weight on. Not so much beer belly, because I, I told my friends I need to put weight on. They were like, oh, well, just get pork pie and gravy. And I was like, well, it's not, not as easy as that, unfortunately. You've got to kind of, it's going to be a lot of leg work and a lot of back work. So the, the training we've been doing is a deadlifts, pull-ups, all the kind of things where you're using your body against yourself resistance training and, and just cutting out the cardio because it, it, it's a steady pace all the way through so that, fitness wise I think you've got to be mentally fit rather than physically fit so the preparation we got given was probably music to everyone's ears put weight on <laughs> and I said yeah put, put about 10 kilos on 
roughly about that because the average weight you lose is around about 10 kilograms. So if you go there, 10 kilograms heavy, you'll come back looking maybe as normal-ish or <laughs> what you used to. <laughs> Well, I've got a question for you. So yep. you are from Sunderland. I was born and bred, yeah. What do you think of Sunderland now? You've touched on it first when yeah. you first came in. Like you say, the black ball's not there anymore. Things are changing. <laughs> what do you think? Watering holes out. What do you think of it now? It's, it's just... It, my dad would drop us off, and I was talking to my dad. I said, it, it, it's different, but it's the same. It's almost like it's just had a, a bit of a facelift here and there. I, I was walking through the bridges there. It looks massive. All they've done is knock down a building, but it just seems that open space where Crotary used to be. And it just marked, it makes a whole massive difference, like the whole Vox site as well, what they're doing there. It just seems like the, it, it's grown outwards. Because I remember growing up in Sunderland where it was, it was tiny. I mean, you could walk around the city centre in five minutes. And it just seems like it's just getting bigger and bigger now. Do you think it's better than it was the last time you seen it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I remember when I was growing up in Sunderland, I, I used to think, oh, I, just, I just need to get out of this place. Because it just seemed to be... <laughs> Like I said, really small, and it was like almost like I was getting strangled by the city itself. And I thought I need to go out there as the, the bigger cities, and that maybe is what pushed us to join the army to just see the world, because that was the big selling point with the army: join the army, see the world. And I thought, well, there's, there's bigger, bigger and better things. And, and have you? Have you seen the world? I've, yeah, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been really fortunate to be honest. Volunteering for, for nearly everything that falls in my lap helped, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I've pretty much been everywhere really. I'm originally from down south, Milton Keynes. I say down south because up, being up north, everything apparently is down south. But being from Sunderland originally, have you felt more like support from the city and the town or city itself as well? Yeah, uh, de definitely. I mean, I've, I've came home now and my uh, me dad, who's worked in the Hashimoto plant down in Baldwin, he went round there and said, oh, my son's rowing across the Atlantic and he handed a sponsorship form in. Went round the whole factory and came back with a thousand and a pound. And that's from people who's never even met us. I mean, they just know me dad and they found out what I was doing where I was, and I was from Sunderland and that was it. They just all came in. So I, I, again, I just, you think it's a small city and you think, oh, no one's really bothered. And then little gestures like that, you think actually people are bothered. Yeah. It is the city with a big heart. I had this conversation Shoot. today. It is a city with a massive, massive heart. It, people think that it's not what it's all cracked up to be. It may not look like Newcastle, but wow, we are real compared to Newcastle. Well, if I'm honest with you, I've been from down south. There's more community spirit up here than there is down south nowadays. Yeah. I've, I've worked a lot <laughs> down south. Yeah. You, yeah, you definitely feel that. It's, a lot, it's, it's like the old saying, it's friendlier up north, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's because we care and we support people that do amazing things like mm. yourself and like the team. Half of the team is from right here. And there's two people from Sunderland Rhone, the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, I never thought I would ever, ever say that sentence. And I'm sat next to a human that is doing it. I'll, I'll bump that even more. 50% of the crew <laughs> is from Sunderland. Get in there. <laughs> See, that's what you need, a bit of, bit of Sunderland. That's what you need, a bit of big bit Sunderland of lads. Bit of big Sunderland lads. So if people would like to donate, where do we go? We've got a website. Uh, it's www.rowforheroes.co.uk. We're on all social media sites, Raw for Heroes, you talk about Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and everything's on there, all the information. We've got training videos where you can see me showing you a little bit of my gym work and what we might be doing and then there's all kinds of uh, videos of us rowing. There's some in there show, we've been up Scotland, we're in Liverpool next month as well so we're just taking the boat all the way around as many places in the UK as we can. As we do the podcasts all the way through and right up until December and through, we, we would love to try and keep you know, updated keep yeah, yeah, update yeah. with everybody yeah. and, and let everybody know and maybe somehow co try and contact you on the way that I'm sure there's a way we can do but maybe try and contact you on the way through yeah because that would be um, great like I said we've got, the social media posts will be flying in so there'll be a steady stream of pictures and, and videos I still can't get my head around the fact that it's I think he's something you, you, that you're going to do and you, you, you're adamant that you're going to get right to the end and I know you will, you've got that yeah. determination. And I've met the crew at the, at the air show. But I just hope you get all the best of luck that you're going to get. I hope you get the best weather. And I'm sure everybody in Sunderland will follow you from start to finish. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. I've, like I said, we'll keep posting and keep us updated. Can we give him a huge round of applause, please? Speak Up Sunderland was hosted by Betty Ball and Stevie B and produced by me, Jay Sykes. 
Thank you to John Adams for joining us and sharing about the incredible upcoming journey with the Atlantic Guardsmen. You can find out more about how they're raising money for the Scots Guard charity, as well as the Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge in general, through our website, speakupsunderland.com. And a huge thank you to our new live venue, the Engine Room in the Fire Station in the city centre of Sunderland. Our next live event at the Fire Station is on Wednesday the 16th of October, just two Wednesdays from now, from 7pm onwards. As ever, we will have featured guests, such as this time the Creative Director of Sunderland Culture, who's sharing about the building of the new 450-seater auditorium space that's being built alongside the Fire Station and the impact that it will have on the city. But also, it's a chance to share your views and your stories. Please do come and join us. To grab your free tickets, head to speakupsunderland.com forward slash live or search for us on Facebook. Tonight you heard questions asked by guests Martin Sim and Dave Shaw. Our theme tune was created by Timecrawler82 and our new logo and branding is by Georges Rodriguez. I'm not originally from Sunderland, as you can probably tell by my voice, but I have grown to love this city. This podcast is proudly produced in Sunderland for Sunderland.